Hi there and welcome to the Fossil Cabinet episode 3. And by popular vote on Twitter, there was actually a tie between Fossil Fish Vergolt and Fossil Crustacea of Vergolt. So I've made the executive decision to look at Golt Crustacea. First up are some lobsters. And by far the most common lobster you will find is Hoploparia. This is a tail. That's usually all you find is, is a bit of a tail or a bit of the bit of the head end, bit of the carapace. There's a more complete specimen, but uh, not the most spectacular specimen, but actually the the very end there, the tail the very end of the tail is preserved extremely well. Yeah. You can see a very fine specimen in my book, The Fossils of Folkestone, Kent. And that's a partic that particular specimen is at Oxford University Museum of, Na Museum of Natural History, along with uh, the majority of, of my, my gold collection for, of crustacea. I donated them about six years ago, but collected more since. Here's another really nice tail section from Hoploparia. And you can see some of the patterning on this one really is really is exquisite another kind of lobster or shrimp like crustacea are these mud shrimps this one is called Kalyanasa and uh, this is just known from a genus as, as far as I can tell and um, these are actually not not described in any great detail and there, there seem to be a number of different species of mud shrimp in the gulp and this appears to be a different one, much flatter and broader than the Kalyanasa, um, although that could be just uh, the way it's preserved. But um, who knows, maybe that is a new species. But again, I, I don't have access to all of the literature on, on these. And this is the other part of the same nodule, and it's actually got a second specimen in it, in it there. Next, we're going to look at some fossilised crabs. Now, these two specimens are called Cretocoronina broderippi. And these two specimens are called Notipucaristes stockasi. And the cool thing about these two specimens is that they're showing the difference between males and females. So on the right here, we've got a male and on the left here we've got a female and the difference is the female has this much broader tail flap section and this is used for protecting its eggs and actually you will occasionally find modern crabs with eggs folded underneath their tails and we can see the, the similar thing on the bottom of these two Cretocoronina specimens this, this one being a male and this one being a female other rarer crabs include Etius martini. This is a particularly fine specimen that I collected recently. And this, this is lot, very large for this species. And as you can see, it's a female. So perhaps different to a lot of modern crabs where the male will, will be the, the bigger of the two. In, in this case, it's evident that the, the females of this species were, were usually larger. You can see a very well preserved tail flap there. These are actually not as not as rare as as might it might seem, but they're quite hard to find because they're usually very small and difficult to spot. So you have to get down really close to the the level of the the shore, the beach that you're collecting on at Folkestone, say, to be able to find find them easily. Another rarity is Necrocarcinus labeshi. And, uh, I've been fortunate enough to find quite a few of these over the years I collect. I have collected at Folkestone. Rarer still is Homolopsis edwardsii, but uh, this is actually just a plaster cast of a specimen I found a few years ago, and uh, the original I think is in the collection at Oxford. But uh, there's a really nice specimen in my book from Folkestone Museum. Folkestone Museum has some spectacular crustaceans. 
Uh, another rare, rare one is this one. This one is called Deratiopus depressus. And this is a, again a plaster cast, the original at Oxford. And this particular specimen is a relative of uh, this one. This is Deratiopus spinosa. This again is, is a plaster cast of a specimen that is, is in Oxford now. Um, this one I actually found quite early on in my gold clay collecting career. Next, I'd just like to show you this fossilised ammonite. You might be thinking, why on earth am I showing you a fossilised ammonite in an episode about crabs and other crustacea from the gold clay? Well, sometimes in these in these particular specimens of hoplites and similar ones from bed one of the gold, you will actually find fossilised crabs attached to them. And this is the case with this specimen here. So there we can see a partial fossilised crab there attached to it. I've actually got a, another really nice specimen, but I can't find it in and amongst the, the lockdown chaos. So it's well worth having a look at these, these nodules from bed one, even if it's just a fragment of ammonite, because sometimes you might find something really interesting attached, like a fossilised crab. Finally, I'd just like to show you these. These are also crustacea. These are barnacles. And the, there are quite a few species of barnacles known from the gulp. There's, there's a good half a dozen or so. And the one on the left is called Archosculpellum compton. And the one on the right is called Pycnolepus regida. And uh, these are well illustrated in the Palace book, Fossils of the Gold Clay, if you want to know more about these. So, and finally, again, I'd just like to show you this. This is a burrow of a lobster. It's one of the very few trace fossils you will find from crustaceans in the gold. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll put up another Twitter poll at some point to decide what we look at in the next episode. Bye.